What's going on everyone? Today I have a special video for you all. I'm gonna be giving you guys some tips and tricks that I've learned over the past four to five years of going to the flea markets with my dad. Later on, I'll be answering some questions as well as addressing comments that people have made throughout my flea market videos. Since the flea markets are still closed, I don't have any live footage to show everyone, so I'll just have gameplay from random video games going on in the background instead. So with that said, let's get this show on the road. Now, my experiences with the flea market are going to be mostly about video games, but you could really use any of these tips or my advice on most things that are commonly found at a flea market. The first thing I want to say is never ever buy something without checking it out first. You would figure this to be a common sense thing, and I've talked about this in my flea market videos countless of times, but I've almost bought games without discs or carts inside the boxes. And I've almost bought games with super scratched or even broken discs. Again, just always double check whatever it is you're wanting to buy, regardless of what that item actually is. Another common sense thing that people seem to forget all the time is don't be an asshole. Seriously, I shouldn't have to say this, but my dad and I have witnessed screaming matches at these places before. Not even with buyers so much, as it's usually the sellers who are the assholes in most of the situations, but still, be as friendly as possible. Chances are, if you are nice to the seller, they're going to be more inclined to work with you on a price, more so than if you're a dick. Now, if the seller is an asshole to begin with, then I doubt you'll be getting a better price on really anything, regardless of how you act, so just kind of keep that in mind. Now, let's say you're trying to buy multiple items from the same seller. Always try to bundle to get a better price. For example, say a guy has games for $3 each, and you end up grabbing four games. Instead of paying the $12, ask if they would take 10 instead. Or what you could do is say, Hey, could you do any better on the price since I'm buying four here? Usually when you're grabbing multiple items, the seller will cut you a deal if you ask, and of course if you're being nice about it, that always helps too. Not everyone is going to say yes, even if it's only a dollar off their asking price. I've had this happen to me plenty of times before, and that's fine. If I don't want to pay their price, I simply say thanks, then I put the item down and walk away. That's the best thing you can do. Don't get all pissed off or throw a fit. That's not going to do anything for you except put you in a foul mood for the rest of the day. You don't necessarily always have to bundle to get a better price either. Even if it's just one item, you could still try to get a better deal out of it. If it's 7 bucks, ask if that's the lowest they would take or if they can do 5 bucks instead. As long as you're not being insulting with your offer, it doesn't hurt to ask. I've even had some interactions with sellers who wouldn't budge on their prices until I put whatever the item is down and started walking away. It's not super common that this sort of thing happens, but it's still something you'll probably come across at least once. One silly mistake you can do while trying to negotiate is having your wallet out in your hand and asking if they can do any better on the price. In their head, they're going to think, well, since he has his wallet out, he's going to pay me regardless, so why would I give a better price? There is an exception to this rule. If someone has something for, say, 10 bucks, and you only have $7 in your wallet, you can have the wallet in your hand and go, look, I only have $7 left. Would you be able to take this instead of the 10 I've noticed that this seems to work almost 100% of the time, as long as you're not being insulting about it. Like, don't fucking pull out $5 if they're asking prices 30. That's a stupid thing to do, and the seller's probably gonna just tell you to fuck off. Next, let's focus on some seller bullshit that you'll probably run into. When someone tells you that something is brand new, despite not being sealed in the package, or that it's rare, or that it's hard to find, more often than not, they're full of shit. You see, sellers are there to do just that, sell. So they are willing to bend the truth or even flat out lie so that they can make a sale. For example, I've had one guy tell me that Resident Evil Code Veronica on the PS2 is a very rare game, which is far from the truth. It's actually quite common and sells for around, I think, five to 10 bucks on eBay. 
I've also had people tell me things like, oh, well, you can't find this anywhere, despite simply going on eBay and seeing 200 plus listings of that same exact thing, and usually for a cheaper price. Now, that's not to say that all these sellers are like this, because that would just be a lie. However, those nice, honest sellers seem to be harder to come by year after year. Then we have those sellers who use the phrase, make me an offer. There are two types of people I've come across that like to use this phrase. First of which are those sellers who genuinely don't know the value of the item they're selling and have no idea what to price it at. And then there are those who know exactly what they want for the item and they're just waiting for that right person to offer them way more than what they originally want. Here's a perfect example. One time I came across a seller who had a Dreamcast with I think like two controllers and a sports game without a case. I had asked him what he wanted for it. He of course said, oh, I don't know, make me an offer. So I thought about it and went for a lowball number of 10 bucks just to see how he would react. He almost immediately said, no, nah, I gotta get at least 25 out of it. You see, he knew exactly what he wanted for the system from the get-go. He was simply hoping that I would offer him more than the $25. When it comes to the make me an offer thing that these sellers try to pull, always play it safe and shoot for a low ball number. That way you can judge whether or not these guys are trying to play a game with you. The last thing I want to bring up before we go to the second part of the video where I answer your questions and comments is what I like to call the eBay situation. You will hear sellers bring up eBay every single fucking time you go to the flea market. I have two specific examples that you'll probably come across. First of which is maybe you come across something that you like and notice the seller has printed out eBay listings showing either the current price that some clown has it listed for or what it had recently sold for. First of which, if this is a current listing, then this means nothing to me. I could put something on eBay for whatever ridiculous price I want, even if it's only worth a few bucks, then print out that same listing and tell people, oh, this is what it's going for on eBay right now. That is just bullshit. Now, say that the seller has printed out a listing for something that's sold on eBay for whatever price. That's okay, I guess. However, usually this means that they're going to want exactly the same price that this sold for on eBay or at least close to it. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I do not go to a flea market to buy things with eBay prices. I want deals. I want to get things cheaper than what it resales for or retails for. If I want to pay eBay prices, I go to eBay, not the fucking flea market. The second and way more common example you'll definitely come across is sellers who give you the price for something and then say how it goes for X price on eBay, which I always think is funny because the conversations always seem to go something like how they want 35 bucks for an item and they say that it goes for 80 or 100 on eBay. Now, why would you sell this for so cheap if you can make double, triple, quadruple what you're asking for here? Even with fees, even with the shipping costs and the shipping fees, that doesn't make any sense why you would do this. Well, most of the time it's because they're full of shit. All you have to do is simply pull out your smartphone and check on eBay yourselves. It's not that hard. And nine times out of ten, that $35 item that quote sells for a hundred only really sells for maybe 25 to 45. Of course, you will most likely come across the argument that these guys don't like to sell on eBay because it's too much of a hassle or something like that. I do understand this to a certain degree because I personally hate selling on eBay, but I don't know how much I buy this argument, especially when it's thrown around all the time. With that said, we're going to head over to the part two of this video where I answer your guys' questions and address some comments. One of the biggest questions people always ask me is how come I didn't buy this? Or how come I didn't pick up that game on the table over there? Or something along those lines. Well, there is a few reasons behind this. First off, half the time I already own the game, so I normally don't pick up the same games twice unless the copy I have at home is missing a manual and or the disc isn't in that great of condition. 
Then there are times where I won't pick up the games because the price is way too high or the disc itself is scratched up to the point I highly doubt it'll run. And then there, of course, is times where I just don't notice the games on the table. Then when I go back and look through the footage, I get pissed off at myself for not grabbing whatever that game was. The next question is, how often do you go to garage sales to find your games? Um, I don't really go to garage sales all that much anymore. Both my dad and I used to go all the time a few years ago. The problem in my case is that games were very, very difficult to come by at garage sales by me. Obviously, this completely depends on where you live, though. I've seen people walk away with some really insane stuff before, and I wish I was one of those people, but no. I either come across garbage that people should just donate and write off on their taxes, or baby stuff. I mean, seriously, the chances that I come across games at garage sales are like 1 in 20, and that's being generous. Next up, have you ever bought a rare game with the sole intent to sell it online for profit? Uh, actually, yes I have. I mean, here's the thing. If I see a game I already own and I know it goes for some money, then I feel like I'd be stupid not to buy it, so that I can resell it to have more money to spend on my own collection. I'm pretty sure this is a common thing that a vast majority of collectors do anyway, and I can't imagine a collector who already owns DuckTales 2 or, I don't know, Majora's Mask, for example coming across another one at a flea market for a couple bucks and not buying it. I highly doubt this sort of thing happens often, if at all. Another question someone has asked is, do you ever use your phone sometimes to check prices online for things you've come across? It is very, very rare for me to do something like this. The only two or three times I've ever done this is when a seller will tell me that a game is rare and goes for X amount of dollars, and I'm just curious if the seller's full of shit or not. Otherwise, no. I think checking prices on your phone constantly, especially right in front of the fucking seller, like a certain YouTuber does, is a really, really douchey thing to do. The final question is, what is the best thing you've ever bought at the flea market? Some people would assume that the best thing would be the most expensive, the most rare, the most valuable, and that's simply not true with me. Anyway, some of my favorite things were games like Dark Cloud 1 and 2, Luigi's Mansion, Super Smash, the original Pikmin, uh, what else, uh, the Death Smiles Collector's Edition, and even that Beyblade arcade plug-and-play thing. I've bought probably around eight to 900 games from the flea markets alone, so it's very difficult for me to just pick one specific thing, you know? I love all games, and finding all of them for really cheap prices is just a wonderful thing, especially if they're incredibly hard to find and something that I remember playing as a kid. So with that said, everyone, that brings this video to a close. I hope all of you enjoyed the video, and if you do have any more questions, then feel free to go ahead and leave a comment below. Anyway, thank you all very much for watching, and take care.